Hi, I'm Weldon Langfield, author of The Truth About Divorce and Remarriage, a politically incorrect view of marriage, divorce, and remarriage in today's church. God's Word sternly warns in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, Now the Spirit expressly says that in latter times some will depart from the faith giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared as with a branding iron, forbidding marriage, and commanding to abstain from foods which God has created to be received with thanksgiving by those who know and believe the truth. Let's consider the demons' doctrine of forbidding marriage in today's church. But first of all, let's build up to it by looking at some background in the Bible. First of all, we want to look at the Jewish view of marriage and notice that wisdom literature in the Old Testament especially reflects on the Jewish view of marriage as being highly exalted. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 4, an excellent wife who can find in Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, God's word says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 9 says, Live joyfully with your wife you love all the days of your vain life. The highest state of wedlock is emphasized throughout the Old Testament. Israel's very sacred covenant with God itself is compared with marriage. Isaiah 54 verse 5 states, Your maker is your husband. When the northern kingdom finally rejected God, God rejected them. Jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8 describes it this way, God gave her a writ of divorce. God too is a divorced person. Christ's first miracle was performed at a wedding. John chapter 2 verses 11 through 12 where he converted water to wine. The Lord used marriage to illustrate his relationship to the church. Through Paul, he inspired these words, for the husband is the head of the wife, as Christ also is the head of the church. But very early in the church, attitudes began to drastically change. And these teachings uh, began to be, the truthful teachings began to be rejected. Soon the predicted doctrine of demons were, was accepted as truth. Tertullian uh, described around 200 AD the modest restraint in secret on the marriage bed as a fragrant offering to God. Most held the doctrine of spiritual marriages in which a wife was treated by her husband as though she were a sister. Remarriage by widows and widowers was considered wrong. A prominent Christian declared early in church history a second marriage by a widow was, quote, a concession to man's carnal nature, end quote. Celibacy, according to the Bible, is not for everyone. Paul warned in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Nevertheless, because of sexual immorality, let each man have his own wife, and let each woman have her own husband. And, later on, For I wish that all men were even as myself, that is, celibate, but each one has his own gift from God. The single life is not for everyone. It's for a very few with the God-given gift to live without a spouse. Now let's take this and apply it to today's church, the point of our lesson. Have some churches today caved to demons? It certainly seems so. Divorced Christians are, in certain congregations, viewed with suspicions and forbidden to wait on the table, lead in prayers, or publicly read scriptures. Even though they may be in the eyes of the leadership of that very congregation, quote, scripturally, unquote, divorced. Home-wrecking preachers forget that some spouses, like King Saul, who changed and from at first being so humble, he plowed his own fields. 
to a megalomaniac crazed with power that some spouses can do the same thing and change from being faithful and true to being unfaithful and untrue. And what can be done about that? Instead of forbidding remarriage for preachers and widowers like the early church, today's church forbids marriage for certain divorced folk. Home-wrecking preachers have given many congregations the dark reputation of shunning those with failed marriages. They have closed their doors to half of the population. This is not God's will. God wants everyone saved. He wants the very opposite. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, God is not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. Thank you very much for listening and watching this video. Other brief videos as well as articles can be found at the website weldonlangfield.com, which you see below you on the screen. Again, thank you so very much.